Good afternoon. This short talk is about developing uh, nanostructure interfaces for continuous fiber reinforced composites, and more specifically, carbon epoxy composites. Now, I joined this uh, cost action exactly one year ago, and during this last year, I had uh, a chance to cooperate with the uh, Center for Nanoscience and Technology in Romania, and Marius Inacescu is here. And I uh, will focus today on our collaboration, uh, which is one part of the work. Now, I uh, showed in the past, and it's been known for the past maybe 15 uh, years, we have tried to improve the properties of the uh, composites by introducing nanoparticles, mostly dispersing them in the uh, matrix. And we have seen nice uh, improvements, up to 30, 35, 40 percent in certain properties, not all of them. But this is not enough. And still, we have the weak link of the interface where the lamination takes place. So we have thought of a, a strategy to improve the uh, properties of the composites by intervening on the interface itself. So instead of dispersing the nanoparticles all over, we would like to place them at the interface and not uh, anywhere else. I showed uh, last year, last year uh, work with Kevlar fibers, which are higher energy fibers. So in this case, it's easier to place the nano uh, nanoparticles at the interface. And I showed these pictures where we are able to place graphene, uh, expanded graphene, uh, uh, few layer graphene uh, on the interface of a Kevlar uh, epoxy system. And I showed also some very nice improvements in properties. Now, the, the objectives of this work right now are to intervene, as I said, at the interface by either oxidizing the carbon fibers, either by wet treatment or plasma, uh, or depositing uh, particles, either carbon nanotubes, uh, uh, graphene, graphene oxide at the interface. And today I will focus on the work that is being done in collaboration with uh, 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 Polytechnica in uh, Romania, introducing single wall carbon nanotubes by uh, pulsed laser the position. In this process, a target, in this case a graphite target, is uh, 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 aimed at by a high energy, high uh, power laser, which uh, eventually deposits carbon atoms on the surface of the substrate. Now we use a substrate which is uh, basically a carbon fabric or carbon fibers, and we can use them either uh, unsized or commercial as they come with the sizing, or we can remove the sizing before we do the uh, PLD uh, deposition. And as we do that, we can see uh, several effects. First of all, when you, we remove the sizing, we can see that the uh, 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 diameter of the uh, fibers is reduced a little bit because of the sizing uh, removal. And then uh, we can see here that uh, it affects also the smoothness of the, fi of the fibers, whereas uh, unsized fibers are a little bit uh, smoother. So this is a little bit of uh, concern in, if we think of uh, uh, interaction with the epoxy um, uh, matrix. Uh, the deposition is done on a cold finger so as to uh, uh, keep the uh, fabric uh, intact. And uh, we can do the position in three positions in this finger so as to get different temperatures. So the very left end of the cold uh, finger is the hottest point. And as we go to the right, then uh, temperature is lower. So we can see the effect of temperature on this uh, deposition. Uh, it's a high power uh, laser uh, system, so uh, anything, uh, basically we can uh, evaporate any material, and of course a graphite uh, target is uh, apt for that. So uh, here I'm showing you a comparison of uh, three uh, uh, samples that were exposed to the uh, pulse uh, layer, uh, pulse uh, laser uh, deposition uh, process. Uh, and we can see that at the highest uh, temperature, uh, uh, what happens at the tip, uh, the apex of the uh, cold finger, we can see some kind of a growth of uh, clusters uh, which uh, are uh, growing on top of the fiber, but in an uneven way. Whereas as the temperature goes down, for instance, uh, in the middle sample, the deposition is more even, the cluster is smaller, and this looks to me some, like some kind of a, a crystallization uh, grows versus uh, uh, um, uh, initiation uh, process or some kind of uh, process that is similar to what we know from uh, crystallization and growth. Uh, when the temperature is low, lo too low, on the other hand, 
then the deposition is not enough and the coverage is, is, uh, is poor. Uh, we wanted to compare also uh, how uh, size versus unsized fibers compare to each other, so this was done very nicely by the people at uh, uh, UPB, uh, <coughs> depositing uh, the carbon uh, on both fabrics at the same time, and we can now compare them. And we, what we see now is that the, uh, the size fiber, that means the, the, the commercial fiber, uh, in that case we, give, we get a very nice uh, deposition, very even, uh, uh, all over the surface, whereas for the unsized uh, fiber, again, we, de we see the clusters, the uh, growth, the, uh, uh, the initiation that is uh, uh, selective. And uh, we, we, are, we have to think why, why this is happening. We have some hint here, but it's not necessarily all the information we need. We did uh, some uh, uh, analysis of the surface of these fibers, and we can see that for the unsized or desized uh, uh, fiber, the uh, oxygen uh, concentration is uh, higher, or the oxygen presence is higher. And this might be some reason for uh, the fact that uh, the carbon is not deposited on the polar areas. But it's not conclusive, and we, we have to do some more work for that. Uh, I'm looking also at the um, uh, thermodynamics of the system. Um, because we want to, to prepare composites, we, we need a good wetting between the uh, fiber and the matrix. So um, instead of measuring the contact angle, which is some, sometimes uh, tedious and uh, not very precise, I'm using a model by Carol, whereas me by measuring the size of the drop and doing some math, we can uh, calculate then the surface energy of this uh, system. And in general, we, without going into too much detail right now, uh, we can see that uh, most of the treatments, either wet uh, oxidation, uh, plasma treatment in air or nitrogen, and the PLD that I showed right now, all of them inc uh, increase the polar component of the uh, surface energy. Uh, I'm uh, about to couple all these uh, findings with uh, mechanical testing. I'm right now working on a, a micro droplet pullout test, which uh, does uh, the testing on a single fiber. You can see here on the picture a single fiber being, being pulled. So uh, uh, in case the drop is uh, small enough, we can measure the shear strength of the system. And we can see that uh, some of the treatments are giving us a higher interfacial shear strength, which is one of the properties we are looking at uh, to improve. Uh, just to conclude, I think I'm in time. Uh, uh, we can see cluster growth uh, in the single wall uh, carbon tubes at the PLD system. Uh, the growth rate and the distribution are affected by temperature. Uh, the D size fibers promote the car class, uh, carbon cluster formation, and we have to, to uh, uh, investigate that uh, in more detail. But we can see a uh, better distribution of the carbon nanotubes and better coverage in uh, the size fibers, the commercial fibers. Surface energies were evaluated. We are working uh, to, to uh, provide the. Uh, 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 mechanical testing uh, at the micro pull pullout test. And um, uh, I want to say that uh, during this last year, we had a, a beautiful cooperation with Marius' work, Marius' group, two STSMs, one in Romania, one in Israel. I'm very thankful to COST. Thank you very much for your attention.